Gentleman ist. We hold a visit of the last Soviet president and the first one of the Union at the same time. He was the only president of the Soviet Union, Mr. Gorbachev. He paid a state visit to Poland, and some intellectuals, including myself, were invited even if we were considered dissidents, but we had a reputation of mild dissidents. We were not violent. So that's why we were invited. And suddenly, I was given a floor, and I was supposed to talk in public, knowing that cameras are there, and they will be transmitting what I say deep to Russia, to Soviet Union, and to Poland. So I had an impossible task to accentuate that I'm not with the system, but not make any harm to Gorbachev, because we knew that he is pushing the situation towards more liberalization. We didn't even believe that he will be the last ruler of Soviet empire. And I invented such a thought, which I would like to present to you now. I don't know, I probably borrowed it from somebody. You never remember when you're in panic. You just catch whatever you have in the back of your mind. And I told to him and to the audience at Warsaw Castle that among many civilizations that were built on this planet, the ancient Egypt, 4,000 years of existence, China, India, South American empires, all of them were very stagnant. And only one civilization that caught up this incredible acceleration is our European civilization, and it still has its leading part in the world. And when I ask myself, what is the reason why our civilization is so fruitful? and brought such an incredible growth of our continent and other continents. The only reasonable answer is that we are inspired by Judeo-Christian tradition. And this Judeo-Christian tradition, doesn't matter how many people believe now or how many don't, but this tradition brought some notion of freedom of independent individual, of human being as a child of God. And that was inspiring. And all other religions didn't, gave, didn't give this impulse to their believers. And from 12th century on, this growth is permanent. We're getting more and more rich. We're having now more safe life. And at the same time, this beautiful flourishing civilization produced some enormous disasters in 20th century. Disaster like World War I, like World War II, like two totalitarisms that were also product of European thought. I don't mention colonization, <coughs> which is also <coughs> one of the deeply dubious cards of our past. So at the same time, we may become euphoric about our achievements, and at least if we include other side of Atlantic, American, culture, which is, as Madame Thatcher said once, America is our daughter. Daughter has grown up now and sometimes doesn't want to listen to the old mother, Europe. But it is the same civilization, Euro-Atlantic. And it has this great achievement. So when I had to conclude speaking to Mr. Gorbachev, I asked a naive question. If 
Soviet Union is now facing so many technological, economical, political problems, maybe it is because it went far away from Judeo-Christian tradition. It was not an offense. It was only a question that meant I don't belong to the communist camp. And in fact, Mr. Gorbachev, when he was talking to our Polish prime minister at the time, and years later, Polish prime minister told me this, about this conversation. He was asking about various speakers and about myself. He had only one question. And this filmmaker, is he Jewish or not? Because he doesn't look like. <laughs> and of course, his idea was that I was saying Judeo-Christian, <laughs> making this link what is common in the Western world and is not common in Orthodox world. <laughs> and now, let me look a little bit on this great difference between Eastern Europe and Western Europe. 